The national debate on immigration reform is being widely scrutinized. But what about reforms happening on the state and local levels? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Joining me is Thomas Sines, President and General Counsel of the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund. Thomas, welcome to the program. Thank you. So we hear about immigration reform at the national level, but we don't quite frankly hear a lot about the state and local uh, level initiatives. I think most people, for the viewers at home, probably are aware or remember the controversy in Arizona. But there's other incidences out there, correct, at the state and local level? Well, Arizona's SB 1070 was just the beginning of a a wave of laws like that in five other states across the country. But even preceding Arizona's SB 1070, a number of local cities and counties had adopted ordinances that were quite frankly designed to make life extremely difficult for immigrants and specifically for immigrant Latinos. And those issues are still with us. Now the state and local officials, governors, mayors and so forth, they would say, well, wait a minute, this is clearly a federal issue. The Constitution clearly speaks to this, but the federal government is not acting. So we have to act because we are literally on the ground here dealing with these issues. Can you blame them for at least trying to solve the problem? Now you can disagree with the policy, but can you blame them for at least trying? Well, I think the Constitution makes it clear that their basic premise is correct. This is a federal responsibility. It's the federal government's job to determine what our immigration policy and practice should be. Uh, if they disagree with that, then they have recourse to congressional representation and senators to make those disagreements clear. That's in part why we're having this debate today about immigration reform at the federal level. But that does not change the fact that under the Constitution, only the federal government has the right to engage in immigration regulations. Nonetheless, when these states and localities attempt to do that, what you end up with are depredations of people's civil rights, where people are denied the right to go about their business, even to live within jurisdiction. And speaking of which, can you give us an example, uh, the one in Texas specifically? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. In Farmers Branch, Texas, for example, there's an ordinance on the books that's being challenged in court. I think this is the third iteration of the law that's been challenged in court that basically requires anyone who wants to rent housing in Farmers Branch to get a license. And if you're a citizen... Say that one more time. So if, in fact, I am a legal or illegal immigrant or a naturalized American citizen, I have to have a license? Everybody. Everybody who wants to rent housing in Farmers Branch has to go down to the city hall and get a license. Now, if you're For a citizen... What? to rent housing, a okay. rental occupancy license. Okay. You go down there and if you're a citizen, you pay $5 and you get a license and all is said and done. If you indicate that you're not a citizen, then the city engages in an investigation of your status. And if they conclude ultimately that you are undocumented, they take away your license and they contact your landlord and tell your landlord you have to evict this individual or else you will lose the opportunity and the right to rent housing in the city of Farmers Branch. It's really a very draconian way of determining who can live in Farmers Branch and who can't. So what is the solution? The solution is that as a part of this federal immigration reform, we have to make clear once more what the Constitution already establishes and the Supreme Court reestablished with the Arizona decision a year ago, which is that it is exclusively a federal responsibility to engage in this kind of immigration regulation. We should have a clear statement from Congress as a part of immigration reform that all of these state and local laws need to go away. They need to be taken off the books. They are unconstitutional, and we need to leave it to our regular political processes now working on immigration reform to determine what is our uniform national federal immigration policy. So in other words, we've got about 20 seconds. The federal, the federal government laws should supersede local laws. Absolutely, they because do. Because the Constitution clearly speaks to this. They do, and the Constitution says that. It's just a matter of making it absolutely clear so that we do not see a proliferation of ordinances like farmers' branches across the country. And very quickly, do you see comprehensive bipartisan immigration reform being passed by the Congress anytime soon? I'm very hopeful. I think last November indicates we have a great chance of getting progressive immigration reform this year. All right, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And of course, thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers here in Washington, D.C. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.